Hello everyone, this is Rohan Shah with bestecontutor.com, and in this video, we'll be talking about elasticity. Specifically, we'll be going through demand elasticity, the relationship with revenue, and other types of elasticity. So let's first talk about demand elasticity. Here's what elasticity really means. It's the sensitivity. It's how sensitive we are to price changes. Here's the thing. Anytime any price in the world goes up, the law of demand says that we're going to demand less of it. But the question is, how much less? Let's say the price goes up by 10%, and as a result, you bought 20% less, so you're really sensitive. Well, in that case, what happens is we're going to consider that elastic, the way to actually measure it is this. The formula for elasticity is the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. So in that example I just talked about, if the price changes by 10%, went up by 10% and you bought 20% less, that'd be 20% over 10. So now notice, since the numerator is bigger than the denominator, 20 over 10, that number is bigger than 1. So really, that's when you're elastic, you're sensitive. So best way to conceptually think about it is this. If you react stronger than the price change, so if the price changes by 10%, but you responded by buying a quantity that changes by anything more than 10%, then the elasticity is gonna be bigger than one and you're elastic, you're sensitive to it. Usually that happens for luxury goods, so you kinda of don't need them, so you can live without them, so you know, you're elastic. Now, on the other hand, if the price went up by 10%, but you bought only 5% less of the good, you don't really change that much, right? So in that case, that number, five over 10, that number is gonna be less than one. So then you're inelastic, and that usually happens for goods that are necessities. Notice that we have absolute values here. Some instructors actually have them, some don't have them, so uh, make sure which one yours is using, whether uh, the formula with or without elasticity. Now here's the thing. The reason it really doesn't matter is because without the absolute values, it's always going to be negative because of the law of demand. If the price goes up, it's a positive denominator, well then you're going to want less, and that's a negative numerator. So negative over positive is negative. Or if the price were to go down, then you want more. Then that bottom's negative. If the price goes down, and then you're going to buy more. So either way, there's no way that this is going to be positive uh, without the absolute values because the demand slopes down. And so that's why really adding the absolute value is really doesn't really matter. But for other elasticities, positive versus negative does matter, so only for the regular demand elasticity uh, is it okay. Let's take a look at an example. What if we know that initially your price is 10 and the quantity is 5, but then when the price goes up to $12, you buy less of the quantity, you're only buying 3. What if the question is what's the elasticity? Now we know it's percent change in Q over percent change in P, but how do you actually calculate percent change? Well, here's where what most uh, econ instructors use is what's called the midpoint rule. The midpoint rule is basically saying that this could be simplified as Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 plus Q2 over 2 all over P2 minus P1 over P1 plus P2 over 2. So, step one, panic, right? Not really. Here's the thing, here's a much simpler way to think about this. It might look long and complicated, but the best way to think about this is that it's the uh, percent change, that the percent change in anything is really the difference over average. That's what the percent change is. So if you think about it, here if we wanted to calculate it, first notice the quantities in the numerator, so let's first work with the quantities. The percent change, Notice, to calculate the percent change, just zooming into this numerator over here, it's the amount change, Q2 minus Q1. So in here, since we're using absolute value, it doesn't matter, 3 minus 5, 5 minus 3. Either way, it's 2 over, and this is Q1 plus Q2 over 2. That's just the average. That's just the number in between 3 and 5, which is 4. We could do the math and do 3 plus 5, 8 over 2, 4, or you could really just look at the number between them. So that's really all it is, difference over average. Now, 
That's for quantity on top. Now in the denominator, just do the same thing for price. So same thing, here's how simple it is. Difference over average. The difference between 10 and 12 is two. And the average, the number between 10 and 12 is 11. Oh, there you go. So there you go. The elasticity would just be two over four divided by two over 11. So whatever that is on your calculator will be the elasticity. One other thing we can look at is how elasticity is related to the slope of the demand curve. In general, when you have a horizontal demand curve, that's gonna be more elastic. And as you get steeper and steeper, more steeper uh, demand curves have more inelastic demand. In general though, elasticity and slope aren't the exact same thing, but they're related in that way. You can actually, there's a formula which you can derive using calculus. You don't really need to know this for introductory economics, but there is a formula relating slope and elasticity. Now let's look at how elasticity is related to the revenue. Here's the age old question in business. Should I change my price? Cause on the one hand, raising my price could get me more revenues. Cause you know, I'm getting more per item that I sell. But on the other hand, it would also get me less revenues because I'm losing some customers. I'm, you know, not selling as many items if I raise my price. So if you look at your total revenue, it's price times quantity. Raising your price definitely lowers your quantity. So it's kind of unclear whether their product goes up or down. When you raise your price, same with if you lower your price, you might sell more. So it's unclear. But if you know your demand elasticity, you can actually immediately tell whether raising your price or lowering your price will increase or decrease your revenues. So here's the thing about the demand curve. Although uh, they're kind of related, the demand is kind of related to the uh, slope. It's not the exact same thing as we just said, but here's the thing. Even though the slope is the same everywhere along this linear demand curve, it actually has different elasticities at different points. Exactly halfway, it's going to be unit elastic. The elasticity is gonna be one. And on this bottom half of the demand curve, it's gonna be inelastic. The elasticity is less than one. And on the top half, the elasticity is bigger than one. Now here's the thing, if you're at a particular point, let's say over here, on the demand curve, your price is this much, and your quantity is the x axis, right? The x value. So if you wanted to find your total revenues, P times Q, that's actually simply this, the area of this rectangle because length times width is price times quantity. So that's why this is your total revenues right now. Now here's the thing. If you're over here, you know that your demand is elastic. That means your customers are sensitive. So if you were to lower your price, you're gonna sell a whole lot more because your customers are sensitive. In fact, so much so that your total revenues end up going up for sure. So we can generalize and say that if you're on the elastic portion of your demand curve, lowering your price necessarily raises your revenues. Your total revenue, P times Q, is higher over here. You can also break this down into what's called the price effect and quantity effect. Over here, the revenues that you lose over here, this rectangle is the price effect, and this rev rectangle that you gain is called the quantity effect. So here you can say that the quantity effect, what you're gaining, outweighs the price effect, when you're elastic. So your revenues keep going up as you move along the demand curve this way. And the exact opposite over here. Here, if you are at a point where your demand is inelastic, your customers aren't that sensitive, you might as well raise your price. If you raise your price, yeah, people are gonna buy a little bit less, but not that much less. And here your price effect outweighs your quantity effect and your revenues go up. So here, you're always better off if you wanna make more revenues by raising your price if your, your demand is inelastic, if people aren't that sensitive to it. So you can make more revenues going up. So revenues go up in this direction and, and in this direction. So really one thing we can conclude is that when you're unit elastic, this is where your revenues are maximized. Your P times Q can't be any higher uh, than it is over here. Because again, over here, you can always raise it by moving in this direction. And here, you can raise it by moving in this direction. So this is where revenues are maximized. Now let's look at some other types of elasticities. Elasticity of supply, basically calculated the exact same way as the elasticity of demand, uh, is the percent change in the quantity supplied over percent change in price. So, and same thing where you can apply the midpoint formula where it's 
difference over average for that quantity and for the price. Notice one thing is this is not always going to be positive naturally, so you don't even need the absolute values because it's always going to be positive because the supply curve slopes upwards. Now, cross price elasticity. What that is, is it's a percent change in the quantity of one good divided by the percent change in the price of some other good. Now here notice we don't have absolute values because in fact what's key is not whether it's bigger than one or less than one, like regular elasticity, but whether it's positive or negative. Because let's say some good in the world's price goes up. Well, if you now want more of some other good when the other guy's price went up, that means these two goods were in competition with each other, like Coke and Pepsi. If Coke becomes expensive, you now want more Pepsi instead. So then a positive price change uh, is related to, you know, it sort of goes with a positive quantity change. So overall, positive over positive is positive. So if your cross price elasticity is a positive number, then the two goods in question are called substitute goods. So substitutes. On the other hand, if it's a negative cross price elasticity, well, that's kind of like regular demand elasticity, right? where the price goes up and then you want less of the good, right? Well, then those two goods are something that you have together, like milk and cereal. If milk becomes expensive, you also want a lower quantity of cereal. So those goods then are complements. So that's what cross price elasticity tells you. Simply being positive or negative will tell you whether the two goods are substitutes or complements. And finally, income elasticity, percent change in Q over percent change in income. Notice, by the way, for all of these, you can measure them in terms of uh, using the, um, the midpoint formula, just like you did for the other ones. So really, it's percent change difference over average. Even though it's income instead of a price, it's still, if your income goes from 20 to 30,000, it's really just the difference of 10 over the average of 25. So you can always do it that way. And here what this is conceptually telling you is that if this is positive, that means as your income goes up, you now want to buy more of that good. Well, then that's just a normal good, right? That's how we define normal goods, something that you want more of when your income goes up or less of when your income goes down. But if this is a negative, uh, negative income elasticity, again, that would happen when, when the denominator is positive but the numerator is negative, for example. So here, if your income goes up, you're making more money, and as a, as a response to that, you want less of a good. Well, then that's a positive denominator because you're making more money, but then you want less ramen noodles because that's, you know, you want less of it. Well, then that's an inferior good, right? So that's what it means for income elasticity to be positive or negative. It tells you whether that good is normal or inferior. All right, here we have a question from a student. What exactly does it mean for a good to have a perfectly elastic demand? All right, good question. So, in general, the more elastic the demand is, the more horizontal the demand would be. So, perfectly elastic is actually completely horizontal, a slope of zero. The elasticity would actually technically be infinity. So, that's what that would mean for perfectly elastic demand and supply would be the same thing. Perfectly inelastic, as you might guess, would be, uh, would be completely vertical. And here, the elasticity is zero. So that's what perfectly elastic and inelastic are. And finally, we have a question. Is it possible to find the elasticity with just one point instead of two? Well, great question. Now, I mentioned earlier that there is a formula, you can derive it using calculus, that relates the two. Elasticity technically is P over Q times the slope. And this is the slope of the demand when price is on the y-axis and Q is on the x-axis. So technically, now, for any given point on your demand curve, if you know the x, y value, and the slope, that's enough to find the elasticity. You probably won't need that, though, for introductory economics. So uh, for, uh, for all intents and purposes, all that matters is if you have two different points, you can use the midpoint formula, difference over average as a percent change, and use percent change in Q over percent change in pre, and that's how you can find elasticity. Well, I hope you now understand economics better, and if you really want to make sure you've mastered the concept, check out our active learning, customized platform at besteconTutor.com. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor right in front of you 24-7. You can click here to try it out for free. 
and we'll be adding more topics and videos on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe below for the latest updates.